Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, nehmedü ve nesta'inuhu ve nestağfiruhu ve nehmedü ve nehmedü ve tevekkelü aleyh. Ve ne'udu billahi min şerûl enfüsine ve min seyyâti amâlina. Men yehdihillahu felâ mudillâ leh ve men yudlil felâ hâdiyâ leh. Ve neşhedü en lâ ilâhe illallah vahdehu lâ şerîke leh. Ve neşhedü enne seyyidina ve nebiyyina ve ulâna Muhammedin abduhu ve rasûluhu. Amma ba'd. عن نبي مالك الحارث بن عاصم عاصم الاشعري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم الطهور شطر الايمان والحمد لله تملا الميزان وسبحان الله والحمد لله تملان او تملا ما بين السماء والارض والصلاه نور والصدقه برهان والصبر ضياء والقران حجه لك وعليك كل الناس يغدو فبايع نفسه فمعتقها او موبقها وكما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب زدني علما سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان الله بحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنا عرشه ومداد كلماته سبحان الله بحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله بحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات we continue the hadith under the chapter of sabr narrated by Abu Malik Al Harith the son of Asim Al Ashri رضي الله عنه ونرس من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم says that هو said that Purity is half of Iman. Last gathering we discussed what is purity referring to and what is Iman referring to. There are two dimensions. One is the external dimension and one is the internal dimension. Through the qualities and the sifat and the characteristics of Iman, a person will be able to gain the inner, the purity of the inner dimension. And through the cleansing of the body and the surrounding and taharat, a person will be able to gain the taharat and the purification of the external dimension. And also, this could also mean that salah and wudu. So, wudu is half and salah is the other half, i.e. a person will require complete cleanliness in order to be able to enter into salah and perform salah. And the meaning of half of iman could be that when we have complete cleanliness in our life, then the reward of this cleanliness and purification is so great that it could reach to the level of half of the, half of the faith. And also, Iman is affirming something and also uh, affirmation, uh, affirming from the inside, from inner self and submission externally. So Iman is um, affirming of the heart and Taharat is the, uh, the external. So in both ways, we'll be able to earn the complete reward. The second part of this hadith, remember this hadith is such that many great aspects of Islam and our deen has been discussed in this one hadith. Walhamdulillahi tamla'ul mizan. When we say alhamdulillah, when we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either directly or indirectly. Either we are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly for what we have been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, for this Iman, for this Quran, for our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for our health, for ourselves, for every ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has come directly from him. So we are praising either directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or indirectly. So either way, our praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person says Alhamdulillah, or when a person prays, praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will fill up the mizan, i.e. the scale on the Day of Judgment. On the Day of Judgment, we hear this discussion when we uh, take part in the uh, gathering of the completion of Sahih al-Bukhari. The scholars generally on the last hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, they discuss what is the scale and what it means and how it will be. And the whole discussion takes place in there. So a few points from there is that on the Day of Judgment, our a'mal, our actions, our deeds will be weighed. Now here he says here, Alhamdulillah, tamla'ul mizan, could mean 
that if the word Alhamdulillah could be given a form, it could be given a body, then that body of the word Alhamdulillah will fill the entire mizan, entire scale. Or the second meaning is that, that the reward of saying Alhamdulillah is so great that the reward itself will fill the mizan and fill the scale. Now, on the Day of Judgment, either the person himself will be put into the scale and will be weighed, or the book of deeds of the person will be weighed. So, there's no discussion in here. So, Alhamdulillah, Tamla al Mizan, when we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reward is so great, the word itself is so great that it would fill up the scale on the Day of Judgment. And here, it is very easy for us to pronounce this word. When we praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are also thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will help us for our book of deeds that will be weighed on the Day of Judgment to become heavy. And the Alhamdulillah is one of those a'mal and those actions that have, have an everlasting uh, reward as well. وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَالْحَمْدُلِلَّهِ تَمْلَآنَ أَوْ تَمْلَأُ مَا بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ SubhanAllah is when we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we testify that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is pure from all types of defects, from imperfection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has freed Himself from it, and such that there is no faults in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ala. Now when we say subhanallah walhamdulillah, both of these combined together, either both of them together will fill up the space between the heavens and the earth, or just one of them, or just the word subhanallah itself will fill the space between the heavens and the earth, i.e. the reward of it will uh, fill in this uh, area and this vacuum between heavens and the earth. And again, it shows how great these two words are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the calculations of the space between this. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of this. So here, what we are learning and what we are understanding is the virtue of doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we say subhanallah, it doesn't take much effort, it doesn't take much time, but the reward is so great. So you are encouraged here to recite, so to do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as possible, as much as possible. The Mufti Taqul Ithmani Dawad Barakatum has said in one of his speeches, that when we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure from all defects, this also means that the ahkam, the commands and the demands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also be free from all defects. Also the characters, the sifat and the quality and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he decides, everything, everything that's linked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be free from any mistakes, will be free from any crookedness, will be free from any defects. So this also we are testifying that we are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are going to complete, uh, uh, follow and carry out his ahkam because we have testified that he is pure from any false or any mistakes. And at the same time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also pure from any defects. So whatever ahkam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, which is shown to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are going to accept it and we are going to follow it. We will, because we've testified this, we're accepting it that there is no false in there. You may come to our understanding or you may not come to our understanding. The next part of the hadith was salatu nurun. Was salatu nurun. Here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that salah, namaz, prayer is a light, is a means of light. Now, what it means here is that we need nur, we need hidayat, sorry, we need light in order to gain hidayat to able to do the right and stay away from the wrong. Now, was salatu nurun, namaz is nur, nur, and namaz is light. If you were to understand the whole concept of the salah, we will understand that every stage of coming to salah is nur for us and it is a means of light. For example, it comes in the hadith of uh, uh, that Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, he says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalaqa khalqahu fi ghulmatin. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created His creation in darkness. فَأَلْقَى عَلَيْهِمْ مِن نُورِهِ فَمَنْ أَصَّابَهُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ النُّورِ اِهْتَدَى وَمَنْ أَخْطَاهُ ظَلَّ 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created the creation in darkness and then he casted and he gave and he poured out some light upon them. And those on whom the light fell, they will be given guidance and they will have guidance. And those who upon whom the light missed, they will go astray. So this is telling us that every creation, every human that's created is created in darkness. It requires some light. It requires nur in order to gain guidance. And even in this world as well, when there's complete darkness, the house is dark. We cannot even see anything around us. The lights of the car are not working. The street lights are not working. We'll not be able to navigate. There'll be many accidents and injuries. And when the light and when the, you know, the lamp and the, the light is missing, uh, this every believer requires light. And when a person has iman, when a person has become a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلِيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ He gives him light, he gives him hidayat, and he gives him this nur that he requires. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates the human being in darkness and then he gives the light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a person accepts iman and when he becomes a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him out from the darkness and gives him light. Now when we hear the adhan, the mu'adhin says the words of kalima, the words of shahada. So it comes in the hadith of Muslim the Ahmad, where in, in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that, إِنِّي لَأَعْلَمُ كَلِمَةً لَا يَقُولُهَا أَحَدٌ عِنْدَ حَضْرَةِ الْمَوْتِ إِلَّا وَجَدَ رُوحَهُ لَهَا رَوْحًا حِينَ تَخْرُجُ مِنْ جَسَدِهِ وَكَانَتْ لَهُ نُورًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَكَانَتْ لَهُ نُورًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that if a person who is about to leave this world, if he was to say and utter a sentence, utter some words, and by him uttering this word, his ruh and his body will be will come out very easily and this will become uh, this words and this sentence will become a means of nur for him it will become a means of nur and light for him and what are those words la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah as the umar radiallahu anhu explains so again when you hear the adhan the in the adhan we hear the word la ilaha illallah here again we are gaining some nur so we were given nur by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we became a believer our nur has increased we heard the words of Adhan and we, heard, you know, we prayed the kalima la ilaha illallah. Our nur has increased even more now. Then a person is going to prepare for salah. A person will perform the wudu. Allah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that inna ummati yuda'una yawm al-qiyamati ghurram muhajjilina min athari wudu. That when a person on the day of judgment, my ummat, when they will come on the day of judgment, the limbs of the body that they have washed at the time of wudu, those limbs will be glowing will be radiant, will be bright. So again, this is referring to that the person's body and the, limb, the limbs of the body that he has washed at the time of wudu, they will be, they'll have the nur inside him. So again, you're doing wudu, the nur is increasing. Now after we have performed the wudu, we are going to leave our home to come to salah to the masjid. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, بَشِّرِ الْمَشَّائِينَ فِي الظُّلَمِ إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ بِالنُّورِ التَّامِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ that those people who come out in the darkness and they walk towards the masjid, give them the glad tidings of the nur, this complete nur that they will be given on the day of judgment. So when we come out of our homes, Fajr Salah, we are also increasing this nur that we were able to gain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we are coming to the masjid on the day, uh, sorry, on the way towards the masjid, we make a dua as recorded by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in uh, Bukhari and also Adam al Mufrad where we pay the dua Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura wa fi lisani nura wa fi sam'i nura wa fi basari nura wa min fawqi nura wa min tahti nura wa an yameeni nura wa an shimali nura wa min amami nura wa min khalfi nura wa ja'al fi nafsi nura wa a'zim li nura wa a'zim li nura wa ja'al li nura so, Allahumma a'atini nura waj'al fi asabi nura. So, these are the words that we are, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put this nur and put this light in our heart, put this nur and put this light in our, in our tongues, in our um, ears, in our eyes, in, uh, above us, below us, on our right, on our left, in front, in behind. Make our entire existence in our entire being uh, you know, a means of nur and uh, give, uh, make it a light. And then we also ask that nur in our bones, in our flesh, in our blood, in our hair, 
and, and you know, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put this nur in our qabr, in our grave, and to increase in this nur and increase in this nur. So again, when we are coming towards the masjid, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the way to increase this nur. So again, nur upon nur upon nur upon nur. And when we come and we enter the masjid, we are entering the house of nur again. نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع الله سبحانه وتعالى يسينا this is a place of نور so again we've come into the place of نور we're increasing this نور now after we've entered the masjid we're praying to ركع الصلاة أبو دادا رضي الله عنه said صلوا ركعتين في ظلم الليل لظلمة القبور that Pray two rakah salah in order to remove the dark, sorry, in the darkness of the night, in order to remove the darkness of the grave. So again, by us praying two rakah salah will become a means of gain, increasing in that nur that we were able to have before coming to the masjid. Now, once we are in the masjid, we pray two rakah salah and we are waiting for the salah. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when a person is waiting for salah and he is busy with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Malaika, the angels, they are making dua for him. And Malaika, the angels are themselves are made out of nur again. So there's nur here, there's light here again that is making dua for us. As we learn in the hadith where one of the Sahabi was reciting the Quran in the darkness of the night. And all of a sudden he could see some brightness inside his room. And, and uh, you know, the host that was uh, close by to him, he started to move. He started to um, start moving around. So he has a child that he would be fearful that this may, you know, um, injure his child. So he stopped reciting. And then when he started reciting again, the horse would start moving again. And then in the, in the morning time, he narrated this to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he told the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when I finished reciting in the morning time, I saw something disappear. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that those were the angels that had come to listen to your recitation. So again, malaika made out of nur. So we've got nur upon nur upon nur, light upon light upon light. Now, when a person has stood for the salah, a person is praying the salah, the imam will recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha is that surah when he was revealed that itself brings nur. Where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that هذا باب من باب السماء فتحت اليوم That when this surah was revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the door of, uh, of the heaven such door that has never been opened before. And with this, Malaika and the angels also descended onto this earth. <clears throat> and they came down with Surah Al-Fatiha. And also they came down with the end two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah as well. And this is such that not been given to anybody else. So again, at the time of the recitation, of the revelation of the Surah Al-Fatiha, Malaika also came. And this again is Nur. Now, once the Surah Al-Fatiha has been finished, the, uh, the Imam or the person himself will recite the Quran Sharif. Now, what is the Quran? قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُنِيرٌ يَا أَيُّهُ النَّاسِ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بُرْهَانٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ أَنْزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ نُورًا مُبِينًا وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا so, وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْ لَهُ نُورًا يَهْدِي So again, Quran, entire Quran itself is Nur. So upon Nur, upon Nur, and upon Nur. Now, when a person, he is in the masjid, he will have in the Sufuf, people next to him. So he's got Nur. The person who's next to him is Nur. He's in the house of Nur. Now he's completely filled with Nur. He himself has got Nur. The person next to him is Nur. He's in the house of Nur as well. Now when a person is in such a place where the recitation of the Quran is taking place, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is taking place, and then Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that in al bayta la yutla fihi al-Quran, that where the, in such a home where the Quran is recited, that home will glow for those uh, inhabitants of the heavens, just like the stars are glowing for the inhabitants of the earth. So where the recitation of the Quran is taking place, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance is taking place, now that home will glow. There'll be nur and there'll be light in there. Now the person who's performing the salah, the person who's in the masjid, the person who's reciting the Quran, he has iman inside him. He has iman inside him. And he's establishing salah because of this iman that he has inside. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that Yawma Taral Mu'minina wal Mu'minati Yasa Nurhum that the believers will have this nur on the day of judgment. And wal mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'adum awliya ba'ad the believers, men and women are such that we yuqimun as salah that these are the people who perform and establish salah. So nur upon nur upon nur upon nur again. So this is how 
um, that this namaz is a nur, is a light, is guidance. And what do we need to do with this nur and what do we need to do with this guidance and with this light that we have achieved? Inshallah, we will continue with this next week. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the complete nur that we need and we require in order to be able to stay firm and on the right path and in order to gain hidayat and in order to um, differentiate between right and wrong, be differentiate between haq and batin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to carry out all these actions from the beginning of uh, the uh, Iman, then also the paying attention to the Adhan, performing the wudu in the correct manner, in the sunnah manner, then coming to the masjid uh, for every salah, then coming to the, into the masjid, praying the uh, namaz in the correct manner, paying, uh, praying full focus and trying to work on the salah in the in the external form of the salah and also the internal form of salah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to practice upon what has been heard and what has been mentioned. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati ma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi rahmatika ya rahman rahim. Zahq.